Hi everyone, Tim here from vMix, and today we're going to continue our series called Getting Started with vMix. Now in this video, we're going to cover the interface, menus, and how to add an input. In the previous video, we covered installation, so you should already have vMix downloaded and installed on your computer. However, if you haven't, you can download a free trial via our website now at vmix.com. So let's get started. So here we have a blank interface. This is the vMix interface that you're looking at right now. So you're probably wondering, well, what does it do? Like, what, how am I supposed to make a live video or a live stream out of this? Well, we're going to go through the interface to kind of give you an idea of what you need to do. So on the left-hand side, we have the preview window. Now, funnily enough, the preview window is used to preview an input. So whether that's a camera or a video, you can move it into that to make sure that the shot is correct before switching it to the right-hand window, which is the output window. Now, some programs call this the program, uh, but we call it output in vMix, and this window is tied to what you are streaming and recording. So anything you want to go live needs to be in this right-hand window. Now, underneath that, we have the inputs. Now, in vMix, you can add any number and any combination of inputs to your production. Now, the inputs are different elements that you want to add, like cameras, videos, pictures, audio, websites. All the kind of stuff you want to add to your live video needs to be added into the input section down below. Now, on the right-hand side, we also have an audio mixer. So, the audio mixer allows you to change the audio settings for individual inputs and also the master audio. Now, probably the most important menu in vMix you're going to use the most is the Add Input menu. So, we'll just click on that. Now, this is where you add all of the different inputs to your production. So, if you go down the list on the left-hand side, you'll see a whole lot of different things from videos all the way down to audio and video calls, web browsers, all that kind of stuff. This is where you add it. You select it from the list and then you can browse for it or add it if it's a camera or something along those lines. So, that's a really um, important menu in vMix that you're going to need to know about. So, for a quick example, what we're going to do is we're going to browse for a video. Um, then we're going to go and find that video. So, here's a koala video that we're going to use. So, you find the video, you click open, and then you click OK. So, now we have an input ready to go in our live production. So, that's just how simple it is to add a video or a picture or a camera or something like that. So, it's Really simple and straightforward on how to add an input. As a quick tip for the future, if you want to add multiple files, you can actually go to the files and then select a lot of files and then drag them directly into vMix. Now, we're going to quickly go to some other menus. Under the top right-hand corner, we have the settings menu. So, this is where you have all of your settings information. So, anything that you want to change within the vMix uh, interface or you know, you want to set up shortcuts or you need to check your key, this is where you go. So, for example, you can change the preview colors. So, say you want to change the window to green and red, which some programs use. Um, if you like that traditional type of way of doing it, uh, we can use that. So, we can click OK. If you make any changes here in the interface, you just need to restart vMix and it will open up to exactly what you had before. So, now we have the green and the red here. You can also do things like changing the input size down below here. Um, and different things like that on the display section. A lot of different other things, including options, so we can change the way the transition bars work, we can change the language, all that kind of stuff can be done in here. Now, we also have information about audio, um, audio outputs, the web controller, um, so that's the ability to control vMix via a web browser. Um, importantly, the shortcut section, where you can control vMix just with a press of a keyboard button or a MIDI device or an X key. You can control up to 300 functions with vMix just by pressing one button, which makes production super easy and awesome. Uh, and we also have a, an About section. Now, this is also very important because it will list the key that you have, um, what version of vMix you're using, and your registration key. Now, sometimes um, the vMix support staff may ask you for your registration key, um, so you'll need to provide this for them for support. And in, underneath that, you can click Change Registration Key. So if you, if you have a vMix trial um, and then you purchase vMix, you can enter that in by changing the registration key. Now, after that, underneath, you'll see Send Support Report. So sometimes the vMix support staff will ask you to send through that support report. So you'll just need to go through to this section in About and then send it through that way. You can import and export settings as well down the bottom left-hand corner. And you can 
set them back to the default. So we're going to click default, um, which is going to start vMix and we're going to reset the whole um, setting section so we can have our colors and everything back. So there we go, we've just reset it back to the default settings for vMix. Okay, so now we're going to move down to the bottom right hand corner of vMix. Now we have the overlay menu and we have an important menu here called the hamburger menu. And this hamburger menu has things like the data sources manager for adding data to vMix, vMix social which allows you to add Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram content, and also the vMix title designer which is very important if you want to build your own custom titles. Uh, we'll go through the titles in another video but this is where you can come in order to um, build your own custom title so you can make it in Photoshop and then start adding text elements here in the title designer. Finally, we also have vMix video tools in this as well, which is good for creating stingers. We have a statistics section that will show you regarding like drop frames and that sort of thing that the vMix support may ask you to take a look at if you're having issues with something. And this menu here is for shortcuts. And then we finally we have take a screenshot and then a lock pad here to lock vMix. Now, um, another important thing is across the bottom, sorry, menu, we have the add input, but we also have the record, external, stream, multi-quarter, and playlist menus across the bottom. Now, these uh, gear or cog icons you might see here allow you to change the settings for those. Now, if you ever see one of these settings, or sorry, these gear um, icons, it means that there's a setting that you might be able to change. So you'll see this icon a lot through vMix. Underneath that, you'll see the master frame rate, um, the quality of your vMix production, and then you'll see render time and some CPU calculations here. So what vMix is using and what your computer is using. So again, if you're talking to vMix support, they may ask you, um, you know, how much CPU are you using? Because it may affect certain things if your computer is underpowered or something. So up the top left-hand corner, you'll see the preset section. So I can actually create a new preset. So say I wanted to change this to 4K, I can go through here and change it to 4K. Um, if I add a lot of things and I create a full production in vMix, I can then save the preset. So the next time I open up vMix, I can click on the preset and it will bring back all of my settings and it will bring back all of the... Um, like the cameras and the videos and that type of thing ready to go for my production. So if you build a production, then you can go ahead and save it and you won't have to worry about building it each time. Now, as we showed you before, it's really simple to add inputs. We've added that, uh, added that video and now we're going to show you how to add in camera. Now, I usually recommend for people, instead of going out and buying capture equipment and brand new cameras, while you've got the trial running, just try a webcam. So you might have an integrated webcam built into your computer or you may have a HD webcam that you can grab. So we're just going to use our C920, which is just a Logitech webcam. We plug that in via USB. Now everything here is correct. This matches up with our master frame rate and our quality. Uh, we don't want to use the inbuilt audio so it doesn't bounce back with the audio. Um, but if you wanted to use the webcam audio, you can select it here. And that is it. So we're going to click OK. So here we are here, I've got my webcam. Hi, welcome to my show. So you really can do a, a, a production just with a webcam. You can mix together different things. So we could have um, our camera and we could have our video as you can see in the interface here. So basically if I, was, if I was doing a show, I could play this koala video and hit the play button and play that through. And then when I wanted to, I could then use the transition section in the middle here for transitioning between the preview and the output like so. Hi everybody, welcome to my show. So that's currently what we've got um, set up here uh, to show you how to do a, a very simple show. So having a video and having a webcam and that's basically how easy it is to set up a production. You put something in the preview here and then you transition it across to the output and vice versa. You can also directly cut to a production so if I wanted to directly cut to this koala video, um, I can just click the quick play or the cut that will go straight. Now what I'm going to do quickly is show you the input settings as well. So each input allows you to have your own settings on it. So for example, on this video, we can, have, we can change different behaviors here, including mixing the audio, playing with transition, restarting, or pausing um, after a transition or something like that. So we can edit... Each input, so there's a, a whole lot of functionality where you can edit each input um, with their own particular settings and how you want them to work. 
You can also change the mouse click action. So instead of moving this video from the input section to the preview and then to the output, I can actually just do a straight cut when I click on it. So I can change that there, um, which, is, which is handy if you don't want to worry about um, switching to preview. We can also change the name of it here. Um, any input can have their name changed here. And then on the left-hand side, we have more information about adjusting color, a color key, so if you had a green screen um, positioning, so I can move it around here. Um, I can change these as well. I can use the shift key to make it bigger and smaller. Um, and, and different things including triggers and tally lights as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can change in each individual setting. So I'm just going to close this down now. And as you can see, the video name has changed. And if I click on it, I'll switch this one over. If I click on it now, it will go directly to the output instead of going to the preview. So there we go. That's basically kind of how the interface works. You bring in inputs and then you uh, move them from the preview to the output. So that's kind of what we've got going on. We have more videos regarding inputs, adding inputs and the interface on our YouTube channel, our training videos page and linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check the description to view any of the information and links that we've listed in this video. If you'd like to watch another video in this tutorial series, click one of the videos above.